This is the oldest server in my home lab. This is an IBM System X 3650M3, which dates back to 2010 or 2011, so it's over 13 years old. It's got old model dual Xeon CPUs, but it does have 240 gigabytes of RAM. Granted, it's older DDR3 RAM, but it does have a decent amount of capacity. I was struggling for a little bit figuring out what to do with this server, but I decided given the amount of RAM and the limited compute that a file server should work pretty well, so I decided to install TrueNAS on it. The only catch with this machine is that the only hard drives in it right now are 16 600 gigabyte 10,000 RPM SAS 2 drives. Um, these are mechanical spinning drives, which nowadays I don't really want for a boot drive. So I bought a Sabrent PCI Express to M2 slot converter, which I've had good luck with in the past. And I just put in a small Western Digital 256 gigabyte NVMe drive. So I put the TrueNAS installer on a USB thumb drive. The TrueNAS installer recognized my NVMe drive, no problem, and installed to it. And everything seemed to be going great. But when I rebooted my server, the boot screen just went into an infinite loop and would never start up. I went into my BIOS, I enabled every single boot option I had available, but it didn't make a difference. The server would just keep going through this infinite boot cycle and never figure out it need, needed to boot to the M NVMe drive. It turns out that given the age of the BIOS, it just simply doesn't recognize NVMe drives as boot options. The solution I found that works best to get around this is to install a boot manager on the thumb drive that does allow booting from a NVMe drive and for my purposes I found Refind to be the easiest to use so I'm going to just give a quick demo on how to install Refind and we will actually also be using the Refind Plus fork which adds the feature of booting from the NVMe drive. So to download Refind I'm just going to google it and it's going to be the first source forge link that you find. Um, right away you're going to see a big green download button pop up but we're not going to click that. We're going to click into files and then click whatever the most recent folder is for that. Um, and then you're going to be looking for the option that says flash drive on it, the .zip file that has flash drive in the name, and then click on that to start the download. And then it makes you wait a little bit while it shows you some ads. I'm just going to download that to my downloads folder. And then the next piece of software we need to download is called Refind Plus which is kind of some enhancements that are built on top of Refine that adds the ability to boot from the NVMe drive. To start the download, we're going to be looking on the right-hand side where it says Releases, and just click on the most recent or the latest um, release. And in my case, it's 0.14.0.ac. Yours will probably be newer. But then just click on the first zip file there. We don't need the source code. We need the release zip file. So I'm just going to download that to my downloads folder and navigate to that zip file. And I'm actually going to open the first refined folder, not the plus that we just downloaded, but the first refined. And I'm just going to extract that directory inside the zip file. And now I have a .img file and I'm going to burn that to a USB thumb drive I have. And to do that, I'm going to use a piece of software called um, Belina Etcher, which you can get on Windows, Linux, a bunch of different systems. So I'm just going to choose Flash from File. I'm going to navigate to that IMG file and select that. And then select Target. I have my USB thumb drive already plugged in, making sure the capacity is the expected capacity. I'm not formatting the wrong drive. So I'm just going to select that. Go ahead and start the flash. Since I'm on Ubuntu, I need to authenticate to do sudo stuff. And it doesn't take very long to finish. So I'm going to close out of that. And then I have to do a little extra step here that you shouldn't need to do, but I need to manually mount my thumb drive after I burned it. Somehow I screwed up something on my Ubuntu system where it's not auto mounting stuff after I flash it so I just had to do it manually. You probably won't have to do this step. Okay now I've got my thumb drive mounted and now there's this EFI folder in there that we can take a look at and this has all of the refined stuff mounted in this folder.
And now in order to install the Refind Plus stuff, we're going to be copying a couple files over the top of our mounted flash drive. So I'm going to start by extracting the Refind Plus folder, kind of like we did before, to its own folder in my downloads directory. And now there's two files in the extracted folder. One is called REL, one's called DBG. The DBG is a debug file for um, extra debug information when you're booting. We don't want that. We're going to want the REL file for the release version of the uh, Refine Plus Boot Manager. So I'm going to copy that file and I'm going to paste it into the boot directory of our USB thumb drive. And we're going to be overwriting the boot x6, x64.efi file. So I'm just going to copy that file name just so I have the file name and then I'm going to delete that file out of the thumb drive completely. And then I'm going to rename my Refine Plus EFI file with that original boot x64.efi file. And that effectively overwrites the original Refined um, EFI bootloader with our Refine Plus one. And then the other file we need to copy out is going to be the config.conf file, which Refine Plus will look for first. That's the, re the Refined Plus config file is named config.conf rather than the refine.conf of the original refined installer. So I copied that over to our USB thumb drive, and now I'm going to open that file and just make a couple quick edits to it. So I'm just going to CD to my thumb drive and open that config file in Vim. And the first config setting that we're going to want to change, just search for NVMe, and you're going to see this supply NVMe option. By default, it's commented out, so it does not have NVMe support. We're going to want to uncomment this, because obviously we want NVMe support, and that's kind of the whole point of what we're doing. So uncomment that out. And the other config setting we're going to want to look at is called timeout. And you can read all of what that means, but the gist of it is that by default, it'll wait 20 seconds at the, um, oh, actually, pardon me, inactive when commented out, so the timeout is disabled. But basically, we want, we want to set a timeout so that it automatically boots to the first boot option after a certain amount of seconds. So I'm just going to set this to a low value, like 3. So it'll wait for three seconds at the refined boot screen, and then it'll just boot into the, the last successful um, boot option that was done. So if you wanted to switch boot options, you have three seconds to do it, and then it'll save that and remember what you picked for the next time it boots. But at this point, we should be able to save this config file, and then we can unmount our USB thumb drive and plug it into our server and try to boot up with it. So now we can plug our USB thumb drive back into the server. And one last step I'm going to take before booting up is I'm going to go into my BIOS and check the existing boot options. And I'm just going to delete all the hard drive stuff so that my only option for booting is the USB thumb drive. And I'm going to save that change and restart. And now I had to wait about five minutes for my old server to boot up. It's probably one of the most annoying things about this old server, but I'm going to fast forward through that, and once that came up, you see Refined Plus pop up, which is great. Everything worked as expected, and then I had to quickly press a button here to cancel our three-second timeout, which would auto-boot into the first option if we didn't press anything. And uh, we see the one icon here in the middle, and the text says, it's kind of hard to read, but it says, Load Fallback Loader on Unknown Volume, which is not very helpful, but seemingly it can't really detect what true nas is um, if it was a windows or a mac install you would see i think it has a mac or windows logo and you'd probably get some useful text there and uh people actually use refine for dual booting so you could see multiple icons there and you would choose between which one you wanted to boot into but in our case we just have the one true nas volume i pressed f2 here to see advanced options that's another thing you can do but there's really not much useful useful stuff in there so just cancel out of that and at this point we could hit enter and that would boot us into TrueNAS and when we do that 
it would remember, um, Refine would remember the last, the last successful boot option selected, and it would save that into our config file. Um, and that way it'll auto boot into the last, the last chosen um, boot option. Uh, we could also go back into our refined config. We could change that three second timeout now if we wanted to be uh, negative one value. So it would just instant boot instead of the three second timeout. Uh, in my case here, I hit enter. We're booting into TrueNAS so we can see it all worked successfully now. The refined bootloader has kind of bridged the gap from the BIOS to the um, to TrueNAS booting off that NVMe drive. And at this point now, we're kind of stuck with this USB thumb drive, kind of bridging the gap. So we always need to keep this USB thumb drive plugged into our machine. And right now it's plugged into the front panel of the machine. It would probably be smarter to put it in the back of the, in the, back of the server, so it's kind of out of the way, so it doesn't get banged. Because um, the front of a server rack, uh, the door shuts there and stuff, and there's things in the way, it's more likely to get banged around. But uh, another option people do I've seen is you could uh, terminate some USB headers actually inside of the case of the server and uh, plug the drive in there would probably be the safest bet. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you like the content, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. I've got lots more videos planned on home lab and computer programming stuff, including how I built my current home lab setup, how I built my JBot and storage server, and also I'm currently building a server for running open source AI slash ML slash LLM models. So if any of that content interests you, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to see it when it goes live. Peace.